the case, magnification is a relevant quantity. Let's see how we can locate images in curved mirrors. Images formed by curved mirrors can be located by choosing two appropriate light rays starting from one of the points on the object. And generally we use a point on the top of the object. Now, if you look here on the diagram, I have chosen an, a, a ray that is parallel to the principal axis. A ray parallel to the principal axis after reflection will go through the principal focus. Now, and if you choose a ray that is passing through the center of curvature, after reflection, that will go back because when the ray passes through the center of curvature, it will be incident on the mirror at right angles. Angle of incidence must be equal to the angle of reflection, means the light ray will be reflected right back. So, a ray that is passing through the center of curvature will be sent back the same way. And a ray that passes through the principal focus after reflection will go parallel to the principal axis. Any of these two uh, light rays will be enough to locate an image. So, the figure on the upper right shows how a real image of an object is formed when an object is placed at a distance farther than two times the focal length. Now, you can see the focal length and the radius of curvature are related so that, so that the radius of curvature is approximately twice the focal length. So if you place an object beyond the center of curvature, it will be placed at a distance more than twice the focal length. In such a case, the image formed will be very small, it will be inverted and will be formed between the principal focus and the center of curvature on the mirror. The changing the object distance will change the nature of the image formed. I'm not going into the details of this uh, in many forms. Now, <clears throat> on the other hand, if you use a convex mirror, the image produced will be always virtual. Just look at the diagram and that is enough. Let's do a small problem. A Star Wars action figure 8 cm tall is placed 23 cm in front of a concave mirror with a focal length of 10 cm. Where is the image? Where is the image means what is the image distance? How tall is the image? All right. What are the characteristics of the image? All right. To give you some idea of how to solve problems in mirrors. So what are the given things? We are told that the focal length of the mirror is 10 cm, the height of the object is 8 cm, and the object is placed 23 cm from the, from the mirror. We got the object distance, we got the focal length, we can use the length, the mirror formula to calculate the image distance. 1 over F equal to 1 over U plus 1 over V. We can now calculate V. So, use the values. Focal length is 0.1 meter. Image distance is 0.23 meter. And therefore, V equal to 0.177 meter. Well, once you know V and you know U, you can calculate magnification. Magnification is V over U, and you know those values, that means magnification is 0.77. The size of the image is smaller than the object. And how do you calculate how big the object is? Magnification also equal to HI divided by HO, is that right? A height of the image divided by height of the object. So 0.77 is HI divided by HO, therefore you can calculate HI, 
that will be 0 0.06 meter or 6 centimeter. So the height of the object is 8 centimeter, height of the image is 6 centimeter, the image is diminished. Now, in such a case, the image is a real image. The image is formed by the actual intersection of the light rays. All right. Let's now talk about refraction of light. Refraction. Now, light travels in free space, we talked about this, with a speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. In fact, all electromagnetic radiations travel with the same speed in vacuum. But, if you allow light now to pass through any other medium, such as glass, water, or any transparent medium, its speed will reduce. Now, what happens when the speed is reduced? The reduction in speed is always associated with a change in the direction of propagation. You see, that whenever there is a sudden change in the speed, if you are going on a bicycle on a beautiful road, and if all of a sudden you come to a very bad muddy road, your speed is suddenly is going to change. And that change in speed will actually create a deviation in your direction of motion. You will be deviated. Now, a sudden change in motion always produces a deviation in the direction of motion. And it is that phenomenon we call refraction of light. Now, the speed of light in a given material medium is related to a quantity called its refractive index. And we will represent that by the small letter N. Now, how do we define refractive index? Refractive index of a medium is defined as speed of light in the vacuum, which is represented by C, divided by speed of light in that medium, which is also the same as wavelength of the light in vacuum, divided by wavelength in the medium. But it is this equation that we will use in solving problems. You must be familiar with that equation. The sudden change in the speed of light while passing from one medium into another results in a change in the direction of propagation, and it is that phenomenon that we call refraction. So if I ask you what is the phenomenon of refraction, you should be able to tell me that refraction is the phenomenon of bending of light while passing from one medium into another due to a change in speed. And you can see the illustration here. Now, this is the incident ray, and this is the refracted ray, and the refracted ray is bent. <laughs> The figure on the left shows a ray of light traveling from a medium of refractive index N1 to a medium of refractive index N2, where N2 is greater than N1. We say this medium is a denser medium than the medium 1. You can see when light travels from a less denser medium to a more denser medium, it bends towards the normal. You understand the concept of the normal. A perpendicular drawn at the point of incidence. You see, when light travels from air into glass, it bends towards the normal. On the other hand, if light travels from glass into air, it will bend away from the normal. Whenever light travels from a less denser medium to a denser medium, it will bend towards the normal. Its speed decreases. When light travels from a denser medium to a less denser medium, it bends away from the normal. Its speed increases. All right, we have talked about all that. So the refracted ray bends away from the normal in this case so that the angle of incidence I think those things are self-explanatory. Angle of incidence, the angle between the incident ray and the normal. Angle of refraction. You can see 
when light travels from a less denser medium to a denser medium, angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence. When light travels from a denser medium to a less denser medium, angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. Now, the angles of incidence and refraction and the refractive indices of the media are related like this. N1 divided by N2. N1 is the refractive index of the first medium. N2 is the refractive index of the second medium. Then N1 divided by N2 is sine theta 2 divided by sine theta 1. That's an important equation. It's actually called Snell's law. So refractive index of the first medium divided by refractive index of the second medium is equal to sine of angle of refraction divided by sine of angle of incidence.